Now, there are just 79 days to go until the Olympics open in Paris. And one of the big questions still seems to be, is France ready for them? We're going to talk more about that now with Dikaya Hatsiyashatsu. You are an Olympic expert and the author of the book Discourses of Olympism from the Sorbonne 1894 to London 2012. Thank you for joining us. What do you think? Is France now prepared for the 24 Olympic Games? Uh, well, I think, it, yes, I think France is ready. And I have to say that uh, a few months, a few weeks, usually before the Olympics, there is no whole city that feels 100% ready. There is always a, a fear, a bit of insecurity if something goes wrong. It's a major event, and that's absolutely normal. But I think France is ready, indeed. So uh, you were very involved in the London 2012 Olympics. How would you say what you're seeing now in the preparations for Paris compared to those games? Well, there are a few differences in terms like, of course, uh, this was more than 10 years ago in London. Um, and they had some kind of problems with G4S, the security company. Just a few weeks before the games, uh, the G4S said, we're not ready to give you uh, the task force that we had promised. So you can imagine that these kind of elements can happen. But I think, uh, you know, we were good back then and uh, it's good now as well in, in terms of Paris. We, we shouldn't forget there are a lot of challenges that are happening right now in the world, like the, the war in the Middle East, uh, the war with, uh, in Russia. But I think we need to focus that there is a big party uh, on our doorstep. It's the third time that Paris is having the games, uh, inspired by Baron Pierre de Coubertin, a French man. So I think we should make sure that we, we do listen to that vibe. And uh, what we, we heard Daniela before and so excited, you know, people are really anticipating this big party. But yes, there are challenges, but I think, um, I think uh, everybody is ready for them. Well, let's talk about some of those challenges. What's the biggest one for you? Security, crowd control? Yeah, I think it is the first time that the uh, opening ceremony is going to take place in the city. That is that is a big, uh, it is brave to do, uh, absolutely, in terms of logistics, not only in terms of security. Uh, but um, I think the, the, the security task force is ready, is there. There are a lot of uh, um, security, private companies that have been hired as well. But yes, security as part of the tours relay as well, and also as part of the opening ceremony. And if we want to compare it with London, we need to think that London 2012, there were 80 thousand people in the opening ceremony within the stadium. So that was the crowd control you had there. Now we're talking about around 600,000 people, which it has been scaled down from 1 million that it was the initial plan. So yes, security and in the torch relay. And I, I need to emphasize something that the torch relay used to be international, was going around uh, the different countries of the world. But after Tokyo and all the challenges with issues of human rights uh, and uh, security and budget, it has been cut down to be in Greece and then in the host country. So we shouldn't forget that this this has already been in place since Tokyo. Sorry, sorry, since Beijing. Uh, apologies, since Beijing. And and what about the opening ceremony itself? I mean, for the moment, it is planned to be open air on the Seine River in the heart of Paris. There is a plan B, which President Macron has mentioned, about it being in a stadium. What are your thoughts? I mean, do you think that it will actually be held on the Seine? Uh, well, I want to, to, to I want to hope that it will because it's going to make a history. You know, it's the first time in the history of the Olympics. But as I said, and I mentioned this example with G4S with London, you really don't know what can happen. The good thing is that there is a contingency plan B and C, which is part of the budget. So uh, if something is not uh, safe for the people, I, I'm sure that uh, the different plans, the contingency plans, will uh, will come into place. Uh, but I also want to mention a few other challenges, possible challenges, that is not related to the security, like, for example, transport. Uh, people in Paris, I have a lot of colleagues and friends who live in Paris. There is a worry whether uh, the metro is going to be uh, adequate, the services for the influx of people. In terms of the unions, like uh, strikes, there are threats for strikes, internal uh, affairs and problems and challenges there. But again, with I think that uh, there will there will be uh, a lot of discussions and a lot of negotiations, uh, and I don't I don't see strikes happening during uh, the Olympics. 
Um, I don't know if you want to ask me anything else. Yeah, Adika, you you won the first ever Coubertin Prize. That was in 28 uh, for your research on Pierre de Coubertin's writings, his speeches. Now, just to remind everyone, he, of course, is a Frenchman, the father of the modern Olympics that we know today. He was actually in charge of the last games that were held in Paris exactly 100 years ago. How have the games changed since then? And what would uh, Coubertin think about these games one century on? Yes, I think the games have changed. Uh, it would be uh, it's 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 only natural that the games are changing over the years. We're talking about uh, even from 2012 to today, things have changed. So imagine uh, from the time of Coubertin in 1894, 1896. Uh, and 1900, when it was the very first Paris Games. So things have changed. The values of the games have moved on. Although we may think that amateurism is, is a good value for the Olympics, it's not as 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 great in terms of the value uh, because it was associated with aristocracy, with uh, the muscular Christianity. It was very much kind of elitistic uh, value. And now they have been more democratized. We do have a, a gender representation Things have moved on to the better. And uh, of course, uh, Cooperton would have been excited that that would be the third Olympic Games in Paris. This is amazing. And the fact that it's not just about Paris, but is involving other cities. I find it fantastic that the, um, the BLM is, is going to Marseille and uh, is having a different entry point than Paris. It, it kind of leverages the excitement, the enthusiasm of the people for the Olympic spirit and the Olympic values. So yes, things have changed, but a lot of things have changed to the better. I'm not a romantic of the past. I like to be a pragmatist of what's happening in real life today. And some of the values of, uh, of uh, the older games, they were not great. So we had to move on. We had to embrace sustainability. We had to embrace gender diversity and inclusion and equity deserving groups. Uh, that it wasn't part of an imperialistic kind of agenda in the past. So I think things are moving to the right direction. Okay, DK, thank you so much. It's great to talk to you. That's Olympic thank expert DK Hatsia Fatsu. Thank you very much. Okay, bye -bye.